All right, so let's start talking about how we would actually go about setting up the forms. Depending on where you're at in the country or in the world, people utilize, and also what kind of foundation you're building, you're going to utilize different materials to set up the forms. In some parts of the country, and I've only done this once, um, in some parts of the country people use steel forms. They're actual steel panels with a plywood face and there's little pins and there are all these kind of like preset um, widths and you set them up and they they set up pretty fast and they're really strong um, they're just really expensive and really heavy okay so they would make sense for if you are building the same type of foundation over and over again okay you, you build the same house you know 50 times a year it would make sense to utilize those kinds of forms because you could just have them the exact dimensions that you need. Okay, You can use plywood and we'll talk more about how to use plywood for forms here in a little bit, but generally you're going to use plywood when you're building taller walls. Okay, If you're, if you're pouring a basement or if you're, if you're pouring a really tall retaining wall or something like that, you're going to want to use plywood because you can get it in 8, 9, 10, 12 foot lengths. And it could save you a, a tremendous amount of time setting up form boards. What we're primarily going to do, what most you know, residential construction contractors use in this area, is just use dimensional lumber, and specifically 2x12s. 2x12s are kind of the widest board that we can get. And what we want to do is we want to, we, don't, we want to cover as much area as we can when we're forming because we're saving on labor. Okay, we don't want to use two by fours to form um, with certain exceptions. Um, we just want to put up, if we can put up one form board and run it all the way around the perimeter of the building, that's great. We can be done. Okay, we don't want to sit around and be stacking different boards around. And then the other thing is every time we have a joint between those form boards, that's going to be a seam on the face of the concrete when we strip those form boards. Okay, so what we have and what a lot of contractors have is just a stack of special form boards and we oil them and keep them clean and scrape the concrete off and reuse them as, as much as we possibly can. Okay. So back to we've got our batter board set up and we've got string lines running around the building site representing the top of the foundation. Okay. And it's level all the way around. And that string line is also representing the outside face of concrete, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our form boards so that the top inside of that form board is just up against the string, okay? We don't want it touching the string, okay? But what we wanna do is we wanna set up, we wanna start by setting up that very uppermost form board. We wanna start at the top of the foundation and work our way down. Okay, so let's go. Let's imagine we're in this like fantasy land where the lot is perfectly flat, and we only have to do one form board. Okay, we can just set up one two by twelve all the way around, and that gets us right down close to the ground, and we can pour, and we're done. Okay, that's not really going to happen. There's going to be some slope on the lot. Okay, and we still want to start out with one form board all the way around the lot, nice and level. And then as the terrain slopes down, we'll add more form boards as needed, okay? So let's say, let's just say for example, from our rough grade, we are 15 inches, okay? From the ground to our string line, to the, what's represented as the top of the foundation, okay? 15 inches. Let's start by putting in one two by 12, Okay, which is actually going to measure 11 and a half inches tall, right? That's going to leave us three and a half inches. Perfect. We can put a two by four underneath that two by 12, and that will get us down all the way to the subgrade. Okay. Again, that terrain is probably going to slope. It's probably going to drop down from there. So maybe we run a two by four uh, a little ways until that gap starts getting narrow. And then we'll step it up to, or excuse me, until that gap starts getting bigger at the ground. And then we'll step it up to a two by six. Okay. And then we'll run that two by six out. So we've got a 
2 by 12 with a 2 by 4 under it running along. Okay, that 2 by 12 continues. That 2 by 4, the second row stops. We add a 2 by 6 as we start getting farther away from the ground, and we can just step those form boards down. We don't need to get too crazy and try and scribe the form boards to the ground. We, we kind of want to try and avoid cutting them whenever possible. Okay, We can get away with having a two inch gap between the bottom of the form board and the ground. Okay, the concrete's gonna be dry enough. It's, it's gonna to wanna to poof out a little bit and that's okay. We'll come back and backfill a little bit of it right at that ground level. So we could do a couple things if, if you know the board dimensions don't work out perfectly. We could either scratch a little bit of dirt back so that we can fit a taller form board in or we can just leave it and say, it's okay if we've got that little couple inch gap there we'll be able to backfill and cover that all up. So we wanna, we wanna try and keep our form boards at 20 foot lengths. That's what we're gonna buy them at, at the lumber yard for the most part. And we really don't wanna start chopping them up, okay? And, th and this is one of the kind of tricks to form work is we want to run these form boards wild. Okay, you see how in this picture right here, here's the string line representing the foundation. Okay, this form board is right on the string line and it terminates at the corner, but this form board runs past it. Okay, we don't need to cut these boards to their exact length and build a, like a box, a perfect box corner with them. We can run them wild, okay? This is gonna run long. This could run three, four, five feet long, whatever the case may be. We wanna try and avoid cutting our form boards whenever possible, okay? We wanna leave them in long pieces because they have a tendency to get shorter and shorter and shorter until we th have to throw them in the garbage, okay? So we try and leave them nice and long, okay? This corner that's formed, that's the concrete, okay? These. All we're concerned about with this form board is the inside face. So when we nail these boards together, that stops the concrete right there in that corner. It doesn't really matter what's happening out here. All right? um, I mentioned before that we're gonna seal those form boards up with oil. Um, people used to use diesel and Hopefully we've gotten away from that because it's not really a good idea to be just spraying diesel all over the ground, um, getting into the you know uh, storm drains and stuff like that. So there was, I think, a shift over to special form oil, and that was a little more eco-friendly. But we've started using, at CR, we've started using a latex water-based form oil, we call it, even though it's water-based, so it's not really an oil, but the technical term is a latex release, okay? And so what it does is it, it makes it so that the concrete doesn't want to stick to those form boards, okay? The concrete butts up to that form board, but it isn't able to creep into the pores of the wood and stick to it, okay? So that has a couple benefits, okay? Benefit number one is if we keep those form boards oiled, okay, quote unquote oiled, if we keep them full of release, they're gonna be more stable. They're not gonna dry out excessively. They're not gonna to wanna to twist and warp and crack as much. We want, if we can help it, we wanna keep our form boards nice and flat, okay? Because whatever our form board is doing, that's what our concrete is gonna do, okay? And so hopefully some of you are thinking about the possibilities here. Like we're just talking about rectangular form work, but you could very easily build um, a radius with your form boards, do circular concrete pours. Okay, there's a lot of things you can do, but as far as foundations, we want our form boards to be nice and flat and straight. Okay. The other thing that that form oil really helps with is the form boards, after you pull all the stakes, after the pour is all done, the form boards want to just pop right off. Okay. They don't want to stick and adhere to the concrete. And so when I was first starting out as a carpenter, there was definitely some nightmare scenarios after the concrete pour where we couldn't get the form boards off. 
we just couldn't get them separated from the concrete and we were like jackhammering form boards off of the foundation okay and then finally somebody had the idea why don't we try out this form oil stuff see what that does and then it was like magic the form boards were just they couldn't wait to get off the concrete okay so we want to we want to oil our forms after we use them and store them away and we want to oil them again before we set them up so we're going to use various stakes to hang the form boards to their correct height and also to hold them in place kickers i mentioned those before okay i like using metal stakes uh, because they're reusable they're much more durable a lot of people just use wood stakes you can buy wood stakes at any lumber yard excuse me generally in length of 12 inches to 48 inches metal stakes on the other hand you can buy in lengths of one feet to six feet lengths and that's handy sometimes sometimes you need those longer stakes if you are building on a crummy lot where you have to dig really really deep okay so just imagine if, if your footings are six feet deep you're going to need that stake to penetrate into the ground at least six to 12 inches. Okay. You're going to need to be able to, you know, cover the depth of the footing. So six feet, let's say we're already up to seven feet. Okay. And then we want our stake, we want our form board to be 12 inches above the ground. So that's now we're up to eight feet already. Okay. We don't even have a metal stake that long. At that point, we're getting two by fours and cutting a point on them and driving those into the ground and using those for stakes. Okay, so a lot of different scenarios, but let's just stick with a scenario where we're on a nice flat lot where we don't have to dig very deep to get to some native soil. So maybe we're just using a bunch of three foot metal stakes. Okay, What we're gonna do with those, and this is the best picture I think right here. These are the metal, metal stakes we're gonna use. They're cylindrical, they're about an inch in diameter, and they have a bunch of pre-drilled holes in them that we can insert nails through, okay? And remember back to that building materials and terminology lecture we had, we're gonna use eight duplex nails to nail through these stakes into the form board, okay? Everywhere we have, and let's say we were using two by fours for stakes, we would be using 16 duplex just because of the length to get through that into the form board. If we're attaching two form boards together, like say in an outside corner, we're going to use 16 duplex. Okay. I would just say as a general rule of thumb on our form work, we're forming up a perimeter foundation. We want to have vertical stakes no more than every three to four feet. Okay. And those vertical stakes are serving two different purposes. The first purpose is holding the form board up to its appropriate elevation okay the other thing those vertical stakes are going to do is prevent the form board from bowing out okay if we don't put in enough vertical stakes the concrete's going to push that form board out and you're going to have these like you're going to build in your own radius into the concrete pour and we don't want to do that we want nice straight lines almost all the time Everywhere we have a vertical stake installed, okay, and try and keep them around three to four feet. If, if our foundation's really short, we can probably go a little wider than that. If we're right above the ground, we can probably get away with four to five feet maybe. If we start getting really tall, five, four, five, six feet, maybe we want to shrink that up a little bit have stakes every two feet, three feet, something like that. Okay, but generally the average is we're gonna have stakes about every three to four feet. Everywhere we have a vertical stake, we're going to drive a diagonal stake right next to it. Okay, and this isn't the best picture, but this is the idea. We're gonna drive a stake in at a 45 degree angle, right in proximity to the vertical stakes. Okay, those diagonal stakes are going to hold the form board straight. Vertical stakes are going to hold the form board upright to the appropriate elevation. The diagonal stakes are going to hold it straight. Okay, so we still have that string line set up from our batter boards. Okay, we're going to install a kicker 
and nail it in so that that form board is just a whisker off the string line. But we'll get into that a little more. But for the most part, when we're setting this up, just plan on having vertical stakes every three to four feet and a kicker, a 45 degree diagonal stake, right next to every vertical stake we have. 